Do you want to be more consistent, have more power in your tennis game? Well, you're probably thinking, okay, what new technique is he going to show me now? Well, it's not a new technique, but it's something that I don't think we talk about enough and we do enough that can make you more consistent and make you have more power on your forehand, backhand, or your, any of your ground strokes. So let's get started. So you're probably thinking, what is this thing? Well, it's footwork. You're like, oh, footwork. Mm, yeah. I might go watch another video, but hold up before you think you're gonna go watch another video. I wanna break down footwork in a, maybe a different way of looking at things. And I think sometimes we get confused about when we see footwork. And I break down footwork into three different categories. And the reason why I do this is because a lot of times we see these like cool footwork drills where people are doing crazy stuff over the line or they're, I mean, there's just, I mean, you Google search tennis footwork and there's a plethora of different crazy moves you could be doing. And you're probably like wondering like, why should I do that? And is that for me? And this video is gonna help you understand which footwork could be for you and what's important for you at different times of your tennis journey. So let's get down to what are the three types of footwork. First of all, I think of footwork number one is footwork patterns. And what footwork patterns I think of is how you're gonna use your footwork to get out to the ball and utilize your body meaning whether you're hitting an open stance, a closed stance, or you're hitting more of a neutral stance, um, how you're gonna move out to the ball the most efficiently, taking the right steps, and making sure you're taking those steps that allow you to use your body and maximize your body. Those are footwork patterns. The next one is footwork drills. Now, these are the ones where you kinda see the crazy things where the people are going crazy over the line, or doing the salsa, and whatever, but those footwork drills are generally working on what I think of two things, maybe three things, which is uh, speed, okay, and agility or endurance, okay? Meaning that the whole point of doing those drills is to get your body or train your body to make sure you can move quickly, move quickly forward, move quickly back, diagonal, hence why you do a lot of drills where you're going side to side, you do it where you're going up and back, you do it going in different directions. Those are basically trying to train your body to move fast. They're different from footwork patterns. Now when you combine them, you can increase your speed and your agility and do the right footwork patterns, meaning moving out to the ball, and then combined, that will make you a better tennis player. The last part of footwork is footwork strength and endurance. This is where you see sometimes those crazy moves where they're doing lunges and they're doing crazy things where they're jumping up in the air and they're doing a lot of stuff that maybe you have to really start using your muscles. You're trying to build the endurance because yeah, maybe you have great footwork patterns and maybe you're fast, but if you get tired or your legs get tired, it really doesn't matter. And so the next thing is like, how does this equate to us being more consistent, having more power? And then the drills we're going to do. So basically, to be more consistent, you really wanna focus on making good contact, meaning that your racket's somewhere in front. It doesn't have to be completely straight arm because people are like, you're only teaching straight arm. No, I'm not. Or it could be bent. Whatever it is, whatever feels comfortable for you, whether you're straight or bent, this will help you be more consistent because if you can get the racket here at contact with the right racket face using your body, well, that's pretty much most of the stroke, how you're gonna really manage contact for consistency. Okay, and to do that, you have to be able to, especially at higher levels or at any level, you have to move to make sure you get the ball here. And that's the mistake where a lot of people might hit with their pros and they're hitting and it's like, oh, this is awesome. I was out hitting today and doing some lessons and I was volleying at the net and making uh, the, the students hit and rally with me. Even at a low level, they were like all day long, rallying all day long, why? Because I'm making sure when I volley to them, because of the drill we're working on, I'm making sure that they can easily make contact here. But when they went to hit with each other, they're like, this thing completely broke down. What completely broke down is they weren't using footwork patterns and had the footwork speed and agility to make sure that they could kind of create what I was creating for them. Meaning that when the ball bounces, the racket's right there. They need to be able to do that footwork to get themselves in that position. And that's why footwork can really increase your amount of consistency. And why you see a lot of times the best players have great footwork. You see uh, Schwartzman, phenomenal footwork, how he gets around the court. He uses footwork to make sure no matter what, even if he doesn't have a lot of power, he can consistently get the ball in the right strike zone. Now, you're probably saying, okay, got the consistency thing down. What about power? How's that gonna help me? Well, the only way you can hit the ball hard is using your body, using the right footwork patterns efficiently and having strength in your legs to use your legs to push through the ball. If you don't have the right footwork patterns to get up safe or get to the ball and set up, hence if I'm hitting balls like this on my forehand side, 
it's not going to be a powerful shot compared to hitting the ball maybe like this or stepping in and using my, my body, and that comes from footwork patterns. And then also, I need to have the speed to get there, especially at a high rate when the ball's moving fast, to get there and set up and do it. And then, especially the endurance and strength, you got to be able to consistently push and use your legs to make sure you can apply that power into the ball. And that power comes from using your body, using your legs, storing energy in your legs, and sending that energy up to your racket. So hopefully these three different footwork types make sense. Now let's do some drills. So we're gonna do three drills for each footwork type to give you a basic understanding of what should you be doing based on what you need. If you want more control, well, you probably need to make sure you have good footwork patterns and you have good footwork drills where you're getting out to the ball quick. If you want more power, hopefully I say control, but if you want more control, that's what you want to do. If you want more power, then you're going to start really making sure you have all three. You need all three. Okay, so let's get started. Now this first drill is a forehand footwork pattern, meaning it's going to help you get out to the ball and be more efficient in your movement. And I want to mention that a lot of these drills, when we talk about patterns, if you take that cone and put it on that side, it's pretty much the same thing depending on the specific thing you want to work on. But the footwork itself will probably be very similar if not the same. So what I mean by footwork pattern is that I'm going to split and my first step is going to be with my outside leg. Here we go, going in the direction of the ball. I'm going to cross over and line up my outside foot with where my target is so I can swing and come back. See how my hips turn, cross over and split. This is just one footwork pattern. So don't think like that's the only footwork pattern I can do. But this footwork pattern will help you get over to the ball efficiently, setting my body so I can use my open stance and use my body. And an inefficient potential footwork pattern is if I were to, let's say, go across this way, okay? And the reason why, instead of starting with my outside leg, the ball comes really fast and I do this, I'm stuck and I can't rotate or arriving at the ball that way. So if, let's say, I went this way, this way, and this way and swung, you can see how I've locked my hips out of the situation and basically I'm only allowed to use my arms. That's an inefficient footwork pattern. So how I would do this is basically practice this. Split, outside leg, swing, and back. Split, outside leg, swing, and back. You do this probably six to eight times and do three reps of six to eight. Okay, and that's just a normal footwork pattern you could do on your forehand. And this is what I recommend you do if you don't feel like you have efficient footwork patterns. If you don't, this is the first drill I would start with. Now, if you think about it, which is so important, is that when we play, most of the time we don't just move along the baseline. We have to move back and we have to move up. So what do I need to do? I need to take the cone and move it back to represent if I get a deeper ball. If I get a deeper ball, I don't want to run to this direction because if I get there, I'm not going to get in that great contact point. Maybe I have to take it in half volley, difficult, or maybe it's going to be too high, difficult. So what I would do is move back so I can take it in the strike zone, hence being more consistent using the footwork pattern to make sure I'm getting into the right strike zone at the right time. So what I'm going to do is practice the exact same thing but moving back. So I'd go split step, outside leg, okay, boom, hit, okay. I'm using a little bit of a breaking step. And what I mean by it, I'm splitting, stepping in the direction I want to move, crossing over. As I hit, I'm loading this leg and letting my momentum take me back and then keeping my weight on the front foot here and coming forward. Okay, I'm going really slow now because I want you to get the right pattern for the footwork. And so you can practice this. So again, I would go boom, out, okay, out. And this is how I would work on moving back. Okay, really simple, same as moving forward, but guess what? I start training these things. So the third drill is to actually do both of them. Okay, so I'd go here, outside leg, recover, here, outside leg, recover, and continue to do these two different footwork patterns. What this does is it trains you to have specific footwork patterns for specific balls, making sure that you're efficient when you get to the ball. Now. Could you do this using a neutral stance? Yes, I can go out here and go outside leg, outside, inside, hit, boom, and come forward, okay? These are just simple patterns that you can start working on. And then you can add another layer to this. So we're just working on getting to the ball. I can work on a little bit of kind of adding endurance or pushing or adding more power to my shot by really making sure I'm gonna uh, use my legs a little bit more. So what that would look like is if I go out with my outside leg and I arrive here, what I do is really load this leg and push. So you can see how I'm pushing and boom, okay? 
I would do this when I move uh, back, when I move, sorry, when I move sideways. When I move back, you can't really do that because your momentum's taking you this way. You would still load and do the braking step, but it's totally fine. So these are three drills or three footwork patterns to use to start really being more efficient with your footwork and making sure that when you get to the ball, you can use everything you got. And again, if you were gonna do this exact same thing on the backhand side, it'd be the exact same footwork if you were gonna hit an open stance backhand, whether it be a one-handed or two-handed. The next set of drills are really speed drills. And the whole idea of speed drills is it's training your body to move faster. It's training you to take faster steps so you can react faster. So if you ever feel like you're a little bit slow on the court but you have good footwork patterns, then these are the type of drills you wanna do. And there is a ton of them. So don't think like, oh, he just showed me three, there's only three. There are so many. It's just really, when you start looking at drills, you start recognizing, oh, they're working on speed and agility and maybe some endurance and sometimes to combine drills to work on all three at the same time. So the very first drill is just a simple step up, step back. So you would do a timer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds, and all you would do is go. You wanna be light on your feet and go as fast as you can because what you're doing is really working on, if you break it down, think about this. If you're gonna split step and you have to take a really fast first step forward or you're gonna split step and have it take a really fast step back. This is an isolation drill, really help you work on that, and you would do that for 20 to 30 seconds. Now, same thing can be done sideways. There's a ton of different drills, you can do it sideways, where I've seen people go here, so what that means is they're jumping over and tapping, 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 to three taps. So you either have where you're jumping over one tap, one tap, or you have tap, 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 push, tap, 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 push. Doesn't matter right now, especially if you're not familiar with it, just start with one. So I'm just gonna do one tap. So again, we do this 20, 30 seconds and go. And whenever you do these type of drills, try to stay similar to a good ready position, meaning that I'm not up, I'm down here, because this works me side to side. Again, if I have to go side, what's this look like? If I have to go side, you can see how you work the entire deal together. The last one is a figure eight drill. So this is where I start almost combining both moving up and back or diagonal, where I'm going around the cone. Hold your racket. Now you can really see how, whew, I'm losing my breath here. You can really see how I'm working around the cones. I'm having to take smaller steps, smaller steps, accelerate. And so again, working your legs to continually work on accelerating in different directions. And not only that, you are getting some endurance with this. So if you're doing it 20 to 30 seconds, which I only did three seconds, you can see how I'm like, whoo. But if you're doing it 20 to 30 seconds, you can really see how you could be building your speed, your agility, and some endurance. So this is great drills you can do. And there's tons of drills you can search for out there. Now these are more drills you can start using for more endurance and more strength. And these are gonna really start taxing your legs a lot more. And so one drill is making sure that you're hopping alley to alley if you can or close to that. And so what I would start on is one, my outside leg on here. And what I'm gonna do is you can see how deep I'm getting. And I'm gonna jump here, jump here. And I'm really working on exploding and landing and holding it. Okay, and then you can start speeding up. So you can do it in a couple different sets. If you're not used to this, just work on going boom, hold, because that's gonna take a lot of strength and stabilization. Meaning that when I go from here to here, boom, I'm holding that leg. How does that relate to playing tennis? If you're out wide hitting a forehand, you gotta stabilize this leg, especially when you're running really hard. So this will really help you. Compared to if you're trying to hit on the run and there's no stabilization, you're done. You can't control your racket face, hence you can't be consistent, and there's no way you can use your legs. And this is a great drill of just holding, boom. And I would do probably 15 to 20, where you can see I'm holding. And then the other part of it is you can work on explosive work, meaning going, I'm going a lot quicker, really exploding out of it. And so that's gonna help you add to the power. So basically two drills in one, where you can slow it down, work on holding it, holding it, holding it or going much quicker. Another drill you can do is simply do some lunges and ex uh, push or explode out of the lunge. So I'm going here and I'm pushing back. You can see how I'm going down, really pushing. Now, a couple quick notes. Make sure, which is, this is really deep in the video, but make sure you check with your physician before you do any of these things, that you're healthy. I take no liability. 
make sure you warm up before you do this because it's really important that you take care of your body, but you also have to be safe. Don't so just come out here and do it. Warm your body up, make sure you know how to do the technique correctly. And so this leads us into lunging. When we lunge, we wanna avoid lunging where our knee goes past our toe. And lunge, where you can see how my knee is lined up with my uh, heel or my foot here, but not out here. Okay, so if I'm gonna lunge, start off slow. This really works on the strength and explosion. And just like the other drill, you can start speeding it up. Okay. And so this is great because when you're out hitting a forehand, what does that look like? Looks like a lunge. Again, strength. The last drill, which is a classic, which is different types of squats. You can do a squat simply going down like that if you're not used to it and do, let's say, a time squat. So I do this action for about, I don't know, depending on your level, maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, or 40 seconds. You could do this squat and then take it to the next level. Again, or you can just drop the bomb and do a burpee, which is you're gonna go down here, push up, and then squat. Push up, and then squat. That gives you a little bit more of your full body workout. And it really makes you have to work that much harder. Okay? And when you're playing tough matches, a lot of times it's about who's going to get tired, who doesn't have the stamina. And these drills are going to help you have great footwork, great speed, and have the stamina. And it's really important that you understand how to do these drills. And you do these drills, I would say, three times a week if possible. And you can do these at home. You don't have to do them on the court. Now that you know how to use your footwork, there's one more thing you got to understand, which is how to have better technique. Because now, if you can get to the ball, you can get into a good contact position having the technique to follow it with the rest of your body is going to be crucially important because now you are more efficient when you're on the court and you can make more balls that are hit bigger more of the time.